U.S. President Joe Biden presented a key component of his administration's plan to combat climate change. He set an ambitious goal that by 2030, 50 percent of all new vehicles sold in the United States will be battery electric, fuel cell electric, or plug-in hybrid vehicles. There are several roadblocks along the way, which we'll explore in today's video, as well as President Biden's aggressive push to increase the number of EV chargers that is key for the ambitious goal of electrifying America and automobiles. Stay tuned! Welcome back to New Vehicle Media, your go-to channel for EV stock. Quick reminder that subscribing is free and liking the video helps YouTube suggest similar videos. Comments are loved and we will feature them in videos in the future. United States Charging Infrastructure Public charging stations, the electric car counterpart of gas pumps, can be found in tens of thousands around the United States, with approximately 110,000 chargers in total. However, energy and automobile experts believe that numbers must increase by a factor of 5 to 10 in order to meet the president's ambition. This will cost tens of billions of dollars, well over the $7.5 billion that legislators set out in the project. However, despite the fact that private investors are putting hundreds of millions of dollars into charging infrastructure, the industry is plagued by a chicken and egg problem. Sales of electric vehicles are not expanding at a rate fast enough to make charging profitable. For most charging companies, it could take several years before they even break even, let alone generate profits comparable to those of ExxonMobil and Chevron. Fast chargers, which can recharge an electric car's battery in 20 to 40 minutes, are expensive but rarely used. Nonetheless, the automobile and energy sectors must construct these in order to reassure consumers that they will not be trapped in an electric vehicle with no outlet in sight. The European Union, which has progressed further in the electrification of automobiles, had roughly 200,000 public charging stations in 2020. China, where electric vehicles are even more prevalent than in Europe, had more than 800,000 in 2020. Officials in Europe and China have improved incentives and enforced stricter restrictions in part because they want to win a worldwide race to construct the automobiles and trucks of the future. The actions of the United States, including the infrastructure bill, have been more moderate since most Republicans and some Democrats reject the regulations and spending necessary to transition away from fossil fuels as rapidly as possible. However, EV manufacturers are putting their efforts into it. Tesla has manufactured thousands of chargers which it has free for early customers and produced around two-thirds of the electric cars sold in the U.S. The business could open its network for vehicles manufactured by other car manufacturers by the end of this year, 2021. Volkswagen also has an Electrify America charging network which is available for all car manufacturers already. In Europe, a charging firm named Ionity, which is owned by Volkswagen, BMW, Ford Motor, Daimler and other car makers. Drivers pay the cost, although for a few years, certain automobile manufacturers have offered free charging to encourage car sales. BP and Royal Dutch Shell, the two energy giants, have bought charging enterprises in Europe and the United States. They are all competing for a stake in a very small EV market. Even though EVs are sold at fast rates recently, they account for less than 4% of new car sales. A proposal for consumer tax benefits for purchasing union-made electric vehicles has been included in the budget reconciliation plan that's making its way through Congress, and the United Auto Workers is urging the White House and politicians to embrace this. In an amendment proposed, consumers would be eligible for a $7,500 base credit to assist them in purchasing electric vehicles, as well as an additional $2,500 credit for vehicles manufactured in the United States and another $2,500 credit for vehicles manufactured with union labor. According to Democrats, Congress will have to do more than enact greater tax incentives for electric vehicles to take off on the U.S. market. It'll have to fund charging stations that would let carriers recharge their cars as simply as filling their tanks with gas. Charging businesses believe that they can be successful even if it takes years for EVs to take over the transportation market. Some companies, such as ChargePoint, have been in operation for more than a decade, whilst others collecting funds have a more limited track record. Regulations and Obstacles 
Members of the United Auto Workers Union and representatives from Ford, GM, and Stellantis were on hand to witness Biden sign the executive order at the White House. In support of Biden's new aim, the automakers have announced their common aspiration that 40 to 50 percent of their automobiles sold by 2030 will be electric vehicles. According to the president, the future of automobile manufacturing in the U.S. is bright and there's no going back once you've gone electric. Ahead or behind in the upcoming race is the question. Aside from providing incentives, President Biden has also tightened the emission standards for automobile manufacturers. As of the 2023 model year cars, the new emission standards will be 10 percent more strict than the norms in effect under the Trump administration and will continue to be 5 percent more stringent each year through the 2026 model year vehicles. Democrat legislators are also seeking to pass the $3.5 trillion budgetary package after the budget bill was passed by the House and the Senate. The ambitious bill includes plans to extend access to affordable childcare, invest in climate-related programs, and expand Medicare coverage. Nonetheless, Biden's ambitious ambition is being met with opposition from an unexpected source, the United Auto Workers Union which has been one of Biden's closest political allies for decades. The union has long been concerned about the shift to electric vehicles and the implications this will have for jobs. Electric vehicles require approximately 30 percent less labor to assemble than traditional internal combustion engine vehicles, primarily due to the fact that they have fewer components than traditional ICEs. For many union members, climate change and the global impact of fossil fuel emissions are secondary considerations when it comes to job security. Blue Collar America is more concerned about whether or not they'll be able to earn enough money to feed their families and send their children to college. Major automakers in the United States, on the other hand, are already preparing for the likely future of electric automobiles. GM announced that by 2035, all of its vehicles would be zero-emission vehicles. Ford also declared that by 2030, electric vehicles will account for 40 percent of all vehicles sold by the company. However, the transition will be challenging because the passenger vehicles account for 29 percent of total U.S. greenhouse gas emissions, while electric vehicles and plug-in hybrids account for only around 2 percent of total U.S. auto sales. The Conclusion The automobile sector has reached a crossroads. One path leads to innovation and success, while the other maintains the status quo in the current market environment. A small window of opportunity for business leaders to reinvent their core operations will be opened up for a limited time period. Acting and moving with the times is vital for automotive sector participants if they're to ensure their long-term existence and prosperity. It is undeniable that electric vehicles are the future of the automotive industry, yet as more and more businesses go public, government and investor support will be the key driver. Additionally, the government must investigate potential problems that may arise in the labor community as a result of the shift of the industry. What are your thoughts? Is the United States government providing enough assistance to transition the vehicle industry? Will the EV sector be hampered by the massive capital outlay required to build charging infrastructures that are less frequently used? Let us know in the comments section. Rio Riggs believes that it's all good news from here and onward for Lucid and stock will hit $40 a share. That should wrap things up for today. Keep in mind that subscribing still free and liking helps YouTube recognize your preferences. Thanks for taking the time to watch and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.